This is the day the Lord has made. We rejoice and we are glad in it. Uh, the old folks used to say, just another day that the Lord has kept me. A uh, Good evening and good day to all of you. I uh, wanted to uh, pause for uh, just one moment uh, and share uh, some expressions uh, from my heart. Uh, I know that uh, there's a lot whirling around uh, in the atmosphere, uh, but if you will loan me your ear uh, for just a few moments, I'll be out of your way uh, on this uh, Friday night. Uh, so uh, very quickly, would you share this with somebody, ask that you'll text somebody, uh, ask that you'll call somebody, alert all of your friends and your family alike uh, for them to jump on uh, very quickly. I pray that everybody uh, is staying safe and uh, all is swell with uh, you and uh, your household. Uh, good evening to you. I see you all piling in. Uh, good evening, good evening, good evening. Uh, let us know what city uh, you are worshiping uh, with us in. We will go live uh, with uh, my reflections uh, in just about two minutes, uh, but ask that you'll please climb on as swiftly and as quickly as you possibly can. Are you all with us? All right. Get some things uh, ready on my side. Then uh, we'll be ready to move forward. We got one minute left for you all to pile in, cram in. Come on, where are you? Where are you? Hope that... Uh, you all are ready. I got nothing but good news tonight. Nothing but good news tonight. And uh, I want you uh, to be a part of it. Uh, a couple of housekeeping uh, things that uh, I wanted to share with you. Number one, uh, tomorrow, uh, as we have dutifully been engaged in over the last eight weeks, uh, tomorrow, our King's Table is open from 10 until 12. 10 until 12. If you have anybody in your family, in your community, who's dealing with uh, food insecurity, please send them over to our sanctuary from 10 to 12. And from our Family Life Center, we'll be uh, practicing social distancing. All they'll have to do is pull up. And uh, I, along with... Uh, a hundred of our volunteers uh, will gladly place uh, groceries in your trunk as uh, provided and sponsored by uh, Publix, uh, uh, Whole Foods, uh, Trader Joe's, uh, Panera Bread, uh, and uh, the farmers, the black farmers from around the state of Georgia. Uh, so if you have anybody, last week uh, we were a little bit uh, light uh, in our recipients, we weren't sure whether that was uh, due to the state opening back up or it was Mother's Day weekend. Uh, please know that we are good stewards and all of uh, the food that we did not give out, uh, we gave to neighboring churches that have food pantries uh, and uh, community uh, homeless shelters. So please know that we're being good stewards of all that you have entrusted to our hands. Uh, there are two things that uh, I want to share with you on tonight. Two things. The first is the governor is uh, belligerently, uh, irresponsibly opening up the state of Georgia in full mass. He has placed the value of the economy over humanity. Georgia's numbers are spiking. Uh, when this first started, we were number 12. We are now number five. Uh, and so we're asking you uh, outside of the admonition of this administration, we're asking you to stay in as much as possible, uh, only doing the essential things. Please wear your, uh, your mask, uh, practice social distancing as much as possible. We are uh, not therefore uh, opening up our sanctuary on Sunday or in the immediate foreseeable future until the numbers in the state of Georgia begin to climb down. However, you know that your church is always on the cusp of something novel, innovative, and creative. 
So Pentecost Sunday, you better buckle up. And I mean that figuratively and literally. Buckle up, get in your car, and come to church. May 31st is our Pentecost Pull Up Sunday. You're going to pull up to the church, but you ain't going in the church. We're going to have worship in the parking lot. You will stay in your respective cars. It's the only way that this is going to work. You're going to stay in your respective cars. Uh, we've rented Jumbotron screens uh, that we're pulling in from Orlando, uh, from Orlando, Miami, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, somewhere uh, in Florida. We've got screens coming in, state of the arts, uh, to flank around our parking lot, as well as state of the art uh, sound system where you'll be able to hear the service live uh, in your car. Now, for those of you who are a part of our cyber sanctuary and outside of the breadth of Atlanta, got good news that even while we're in the parking lot, we'll still be streaming live. To that end, I've got to pause and publicly appreciate uh, those of you who have been getting the word out. Our streaming numbers literally have doubled since COVID-19. Uh, that means that you all are operating in social media evangelists and ambassadors uh, to spread the word about what it is we're doing. I announced our parking lot pull-up Pentecost service, May 31st, 9.30 a.m. I announced it last night around this time. Our, our parking uh, lot holds 3,000 cars, uh, but to operate in the best prudent behavior, we're doing speed, uh, we're doing uh, social distancing, so we're only allowing 1,000 cars. In 24 hours, in 24 hours, 650 people have registered, which means I have shy of just 400 slots available. I need you to register and I need you to do it right now. Go to newbirth.org, register. We will send a confirmation to your phone. Somebody put newbirth.org on the screen. Let me see it. Uh, newbirth.org. Let me see you put it on the screen uh, so nobody gets it messed up. Newbirth.org. Uh, I only have 400 spaces. Do not register and you watching me from Anchorage, Alaska. You know you're not pulling up. I need those spaces. Uh, once it is that we get to our cutoff, I'll be finished. We'll be through and you will not be uh, granted access to the parking lot. So ask that you would please register tonight. I want to fill up uh, these 400 remaining parking spaces uh, by Sunday. Now, I got good news for you. Good news. Uh, something amazing has dropped in our lap and I wanted you to have it. Ordinarily, I would wait till Sunday, but I can't. I got to give it to you now. The amazing thing about technology, I don't have to wait till Sunday to give you late breaking announcements. Would you all share this, share this, share this, share this as quickly as possible. Tag somebody as quickly as possible. All of that was the appetizer. All of what I've said was the prelim. Here is the big one. New birth. Your church has just made one of the singular largest partnerships in the body of Christ. Uh, World Vision is uh, a global humanitarian organization uh, that does feeding in over 100 countries around the world. They've been in existence since 1950. They have 40,000 on their staff. For, did you hear what I just said? 40,000 on their staff. In light and in lieu of what is taking place in the economy of this nation with um, unemployment skyrocketing uh, at a mystifying rate, the USDA, the USDA um, has just earmarked a billion dollars, that's a billion with a B, earmarked a billion dollars 
to do a program called Farmers to Family. Farmers to Family. And in this program, USDA, Farmers to Family, linked up with World Vision. And World Vision, a global organization, 100 different countries around the world, 40,000 employees, tapped New Birth Missionary Baptist Church in Stonecrest, Georgia, to be the hub of food distribution for the Southeast region of the United States. What does that mean? Because y'all ain't clapping, y'all ain't shouting, y'all ain't putting no hearts on the screen. I should just log off right now, but I'm gonna stay right here. That translates family, community, that translates that every week, every week beginning Father's Day weekend, New Birth is going to be the recipient of 3,000 meals. Somebody put that on the screen for me. 3,000 meals. Not canned food, not dry goods. Of meat, produce, and dairy. I'm telling y'all about chicken, collard greens, milk, cheese, and everything that is a subsidiary of that. It's going to be dropped off to our church. 3,000 boxes of it. Because we are now the Southeast um, epicenter or hub, as they would call it, we then have been entrusted to find 10 churches in the Southeast region who we then will stock them up to capacity so that they can replicate the model. God gives seed to the soul. He is doing this, why? Because he saw how we've been faithful over these last eight weeks and now he's getting us ready to literally feed the masses. I'm excited as we get closer to Father's Day and our official launch, I will be announcing to you every week our churches who we are in fact now going to partner with so that they can be pods to this project and this enterprise. I'm excited. Your church has the capacity to do it, uh, to receive it, because you're gonna have to have uh, flush uh, refrigeration and freezer capacity to do it. You got a church and you're saying, Pastor, we can handle this, but please also know you got to come and pick it up weekly. Weekly it's coming. So you're going to send the email to partnerships at newbirth.org. Now, in order for you to be able to do this, uh, in this grant through the USDA, our farmers to families, if you're going to be the host, if you're going to be the co-host, you're gonna be the hub, then you have to put up as the hub $400,000, almost a half million dollars. If in fact you are going to be a distribution center for one of these 10 churches, ordinarily, You'd have to put up $97,000. The grace and the favor of God. I better back up before I go. To be the epicenter costs $400,000. For you to be a partner costs $97,000. I got on tonight because I was bursting at the seams with enthusiasm and gratitude. They came to us, new birth, family, community, and says it usually costs 400,000. I know I'm repetitive. I know I'm echoing uh, the language of Moses and just stuttering, saying it over again. It usually costs $400,000, half a million dollars, just for the privilege of being the headquarters. 97,000, if you want to be a distribution center. The USDA, 
told us today in a phone call at 12 noon today that there will be no cost of $400,000 to new birth to be the epicenter for the Southeast region of the United States. And let me show you how the favor of God works. The 10 churches in which we partner with will not have to pay the 97,000. They said, we've watched, we've observed, we've seen how it is you freely given. And so now we're giving it to you. New birth, I said something to you Tuesday, and I don't think that you all believed it, but I popped on here tonight to remind you in a resounding tenor, we will prosper in a pandemic. I feel that with everything in my being, we will prosper in a pandemic. I need you to say that to yourself. I'm telling you, I have it etched and tattooed in my soul. I am going to prosper in this pandemic. I, I need you to say that. I need you to speak it over your children, over your household, over your family. We are going to prosper in a pandemic. What it should have cost us a half million dollars to receive we are getting it for free. We are gonna prosper in a pandemic, but the oil is flowing so densely, so heavy, heavily, that not only am I not paying, but the 10 churches who become connected to the move of God that we are now connected to, they won't have to pay. I need you to hear me tonight. I need your level of faith to be uh, so astronomical that I trust and believe God that whatever it is that God does for me in this pandemic, he is going to replicate it in the life of 10 people who are connected to me. Hallelujah. 10 people that are connected to me are going to receive that same level of favor. Can you all imagine 10 family members will have their rent paid? 10 family members will have their car note excused. 10 family members will go without having to wrestle through tuition and aftercare. 10 family members are going to receive surprise checks in the mail. 10 family members are going to have their savings restored. 10 people who call themselves your friend are going to get bonuses and rebates. Ten people who have prayed for you are going to have an angel assigned to their life. Ten people who gave you an encouraging word when they didn't know you were in the doldrums of despair are going to get a shot in the arm. Ten people who have hit a brick wall are going to find the strength to climb the wall. 10 people, and then there's you. Last night, uh, I need you all to go back and watch what I said on last night, not even knowing what was going to happen on today. I said on last night, and I never do this. Those of y'all that know me from empowerment, those of you who now know me at New Birth, know I'll never go this low. Go back, rewind the tape. Last night, I said to everybody, Pay a seed, sow a seed, give a seed of $11. That's what I said last night. I said last night, give a seed of $11. And here's what I said last night. So nobody is left behind. And you all just started sowing, started pouring, started giving. Didn't even know what was happening in 24 hours. And now 24 hours later. New birth is going to be blessed, and 10 churches around it are going to be blessed. Nobody's going to be left behind. That's what my faith is speaking in this moment, that God is releasing a friends and family corporate blessing. I want to challenge you tonight. I'm going to pray for you. 
in just one moment, but I want to challenge every person. You missed last night. Don't worry about it. I want to challenge every person right now. I want you to give a C, not of a thousand, not a hundred, not 50, not 40 of $11. I'm giving a seed of 11 tonight saying, Lord, I believe that what you put on my church is getting ready to drip into my life. What it is that you had happen in the last 24 hours is now going to rear its head into the lives of the people in whom I am connected to. Pastor, listen, you don't even know how tight things are. But I'm going to rub two nickels together and I'm going to trust God. I uh, said on Tuesday, I began praying, Lord, I want you to supernaturally bless me that I can't wait till Sundays to give. But that randomly through the week, I'm going to start sowing. Why? Because I want you to randomly stop blessing me through the week. I don't serve a God who only blesses on Sunday. And so as a consequence, we ought not be a people that only sows on Sunday. 11, that's what I'm asking you to do. I'm getting ready to pray for your family. Pray for your household. Getting ready to pray for your future. Getting ready to pray for your finances. Getting ready to pray for your endeavors. I started a series on Tuesday that says in 3 John chapter 1, verse number 2, above all else, I pray that you will be in health. I pray that you will prosper just as your soul is going to prosper. I believe in that. That same sentiment, I echo it and release it into your life. I release it into your family. I release it into your community. The God's getting ready. This God gave new birth a half million dollar blessing. And here's what I need you to understand that we didn't pray for. He released a half million dollar blessing for something we were not in search of. A half million dollar blessing, watch this, for what we didn't apply to get. He said, I watched how you gave. I watched how you sold. He gives seed to the sower. You have no idea what God is going to do in the life of every believer. Hear this. I speak prophetically before Sunday. But what's getting ready to open up for you? You don't know how he's getting ready to bless, how he's getting ready to move. I, I'm not even selling you on it. I'm not trying to convince you of it. I'm testifying about it. I have never seen the righteous forsaken or a seed begging for bread. In just one minute, I'm getting ready to pray for you. I'm getting ready, getting ready to pray for your family. I'm getting ready to pray, hear this, for what you've been praying for. Say that again, Pastor. I'm getting ready to pray for what you've been praying for and what you've been praying about. I'm getting ready to do it. Lift up that hand. I want you to receive it. Your hand is an antenna unto heaven. Lift it up as high as you can. I know you've been out of practice. We ain't been in church for eight weeks, but I need you to lift up that hand and receive this prayer of God over your life. It's a hedge fence of protection. Good and gracious God, merciful master, forgiving father, hallelujah. I come travailing, I come earnestly pleading. I come groveling at your feet. I come holding on to the hem of your garment. I pray God, please ex excuse my greed, but I'm not praying for one person, I'm praying for the 10 people who circle and navigate around their life, the 10 people who they text the most, who they call the most, who they email the most, who they think about the most, 
who they come into contact with the most. God, I pray that you will bless them in areas they don't know how to request. I pray, dear Lord, that based off of their faithfulness in the past, you will make them fortunate in the future. I thank you, dear Lord, that the heaviness is now being lifted. The stress is now being lifted. The worry is now being lifted. The anxiety is now being lifted. I believe by faith, God, that just as you said to the man of God in the Old Testament, if you take care of my house, I'll take care of your house. So you did for Solomon, do it for us. I pray that no household is in lack. No household deals with insufficiency. No household is absent of resources. I thank you, dear Lord. We don't know how long we're going to be in it, but send it on down. Send it on down. Send down the overflow. Send down the treasure trove of resources. Send down more than enough. Show the side of your personality that is Jehovah Jireh. We call it into existence. We believe it to be so. In Jesus' name, amen. Tomorrow, I'm going to be out at the uh, uh, king's table from 10 until 12. I want you to come get all of it because one month from now, we are tripling our reach from 1,000 to 3,000. I'm dropping bombs. Y'all ain't catching them. Can you imagine your income tripling, your peace tripling, the favor on your life tripling. Did you not hear the news today that Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon, is getting ready to become the world's first trillionaire? The world's first trillionaire. In your lifetime, you're getting ready to witness a trillionaire, and you don't trust God for closing costs on your house? You don't believe he can get you out of that car? You don't believe he can handle your student loans? You don't believe he can breathe on your business? You don't believe he can restore your health? You don't believe he can bring your family member out of hospice? You don't believe he can shrink cancer cells? Your grandparents never knew a billionaire. And now you get ready to witness a trillionaire. God, I don't want it to just happen for me. But I need it to be for the 10 who are connected to me. Watch God do it. I trust him for it. Listen, you don't need food. Give God glory. Sunday morning at 930. I want you to worship with me online at newbirth.org. May 31st, don't hesitate, don't wait, don't deliberate. Go register. When I get to 1,000, I made a pledge to our leadership, to the police department of DeKalb County, to our elected officials. When I get to 1,000, I'm shutting it down. Let's go. God bless you. So that 11 right now. All of the prompts are right below me. I want you to give right now. Believing by faith. God's got a half million dollar blessing and it's got my name on it. God bless you.